Thanks to TCVB and Asahi Shimbun Publications for sponsoring this video. That was a mouthful. If you've ever gone out to eat in Japan, you've probably seen these. Colourful, shiny and incredibly realistic displays of menu items at the front of the restaurant. In my first year in Japan, they were the only thing stopping me from accidentally ordering octopus on a stick instead of chicken on rice. The real joke's on me though, because octopus on a stick actually isn't that bad. Also, yes, hi, hello, um, I'm not sick, I'm just not wearing much makeup. others looked at these food displays with awe. How the heck did I get them to look so realistic? Moreover, how did they manage to get them to look like actual dishes in that restaurant? So I'm here at Kapabashi Matsuri and that basically means a uh, tool bridge festival. So, self-explanatory. So basically this area is, it's an entire street dedicated to selling people goods like cooking utensils and cups and bowls and things like that, but also things for restaurant owners and people to buy signs and all kinds of little things that they might need for their store. This festival kind of, I don't know, I think it's like a way for all of the stores to have like a, a big sale and everyone can come down here and experience it all together. So yeah, strap yourselves in for a deep dive that nobody asked for. <laughs> This is 100% the place to be to find anything that you need for your restaurant from the cooking utensils you cook the food with, the stuff on the table, the placemats, the signs out the front. They've also got a lot of like specialty items, so like really, really, really expensive knives and things like that. So yeah, everyone's staring at me. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> what about this one? It's like Miju Sanmai or something. This one. Ah, this is so. Yes. This is fish. So apart from the street having everything you could possibly need for your kitchen, the main thing I was excited to see was the Shokuhin Sampuru, or replica food store. Oh, thank God. I was sent to get really panicked because I basically planned this whole video about little food display things and I couldn't find any shops on this street that sold them and I was getting really freaked out. I was like, no, what's this video going to be about? But I found one. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> The food in these stores are ridiculously realistic. Oh my gosh. It even looks like someone's taken a bite out of it. Like you can see like the little like, like ridges on the bread. That's crazy. It's said that it began around the 1920s when eating out became more popular. Residents from out of town weren't familiar with the food so they created these little replicas to help them out. I suppose it's still being used for that purpose except the people from out of town are like, like really out of town. <laughs> you can buy anything from keychains to pen holders and even little do it at home assemble kits. One of the most surprising things you'll find here though is the price. In this store, smaller pieces are priced at around 1,000 yen. The most expensive one that they've got here is 150,000 Japanese yen. So that is somewhere around 15,000 US dollars. I'm totally lying and terrible at maths. It's actually only 1,500 US dollars, but still, I mean, I could buy like a year's worth of mochi for that. Maybe. If a restaurant owner wanted to get their entire menu of food replicated, it can cost over 1 million yen. And there really is an art to it. Approximately 95% of all replica food in Japan is created by hand. I can easily tell the difference between a printed model and one that's been painstakingly created by hand. There's something about the way a handmade replica looks and feels, and I don't think it can be recreated on a 3D printer. Mm, yet. I mean, 
Well, what do I know? <laughs> like literally nothing on this topic. <laughs> to make larger pieces of replica food, first the real food is covered in silicon to create a mold. Then they fill the mold with resin, which is hardened in an oven. And once that's done, they remove the imperfections by hand and start to color them with air and paint brushes before being assembled on the plate and then given any final touches. It really is a huge process to make just one dish of food. And that's not counting the time taken for the restaurant to contact the company, to send over completed meal photos, sketches and samples before making their final order. It's no wonder the replica food industry in Japan is now estimated to be worth over 90 billion yen. For some smaller pieces, however, there are different techniques used to create these hyper-realistic pieces of art, and you can even join a little workshop that lets you try these techniques firsthand. I wasn't able to join the workshop this time, so this is footage from Dolga TV. Thank you for letting me steal your video. It doesn't look half as bad as I thought it was gonna turn out. Okay, very nice, very nice. So apparently the food used to be made out of a kind of wax, but they found that over time, the wax would kind of discolor and the food didn't really look very appetizing. So then they came up with a new method, which is using a kind of like, vinyl plastic that have a really long name that I don't know what it is. By doing it this way, the products practically lasted forever. But one of the main issues that they face now is because they last forever, business has kind of stagnated because unless the restaurant changes their menu, they don't need to update it over time. Unlike our iPhones, which very cleverly slow down over the years. <laughs> This is the reason why companies like Iwasaki Bay, one of the leading replica food corporations, are now trying their best to export their products to countries like Korea, China, and even in the West. You know what, some of these like fruit displays might actually be cheaper than buying the real thing. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but kind of not really. <sighs> wow, in the drinks. How do they get the bubbles in, in the plastic? Ah, I'm not supposed to touch it, damn it. But I can't help it. I just want to touch everything. <laughs> so now when you come to Japan and you see these helpful little food plastic displays at the front of a restaurant, I hope that I've given you somewhat of a newfound appreciation for this art form. And if you do find yourself in Kapabashi Dori or you know, any of the other food sample stores around Tokyo or uh, Japan, uh, yeah, go pick up uh, an overpriced keychain of mochi. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say. That concludes the deep dive into a topic that you didn't know that you wanted. You're welcome. <laughs> it's about six, six-ish now. Um, I'm pooped, but I had a lot of fun like actually researching this topic and learning about how they make these things and how much effort and time and like how big of a business it really is. Um, so let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below if you really enjoyed it. I've also got a Patreon if you're interested in supporting me in other ways. I'd highly recommend this area. I mean, it didn't so much have like the Matsuri Matsuri kind of vibe that you normally get in a Matsuri. Matsuri Matsuri Matsuri. But it's still really cool. It was really, like, really interesting to see all of the different stores. Never been in this area before so I highly recommend it if you're in the in the area of Asakusa kind of area. Um, I'm gonna stop talking now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Not covering the lens, not covering the lens. Happy? <laughs>